We've also been discovering some things about the technology used or misused for such missions. And to talk more about this, I'm joined by our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Peter, um, a lot has been debated about this, even what to call the vessel itself. Yes, that's right, Monty. Uh, towards the start of this, we saw the word submarine mi widely used, but of course, deep sea boffins were very quick to point out that it was in, in fact a submersible. The difference being that submersibles require a mothership because they don't have enough power to leave the port and return to the port all in themselves. Uh, the mothership, of course, of Ocean Gate's Titan, uh, losing contact with the vessel after just one hour and 45 minutes into its dive. And once details emerged on the vessel's design, there was an almost obsessive focus on this. Uh, the fact that it was controlled with a video game controller, a budget one at that, specifically the Logitech F710, although we don't know for sure that this one was used on the mission, but it seems likely that it was that or a similar game controller. And this was an easy target for ridicule. I mean, people were saying, how could you be sitting in something uh, on which your life depends and controlling it with something that's used to pilot video games? But... Um, I'd say that it's probably the, the, the least of many of the concerns surrounding uh, the Titan. Uh, militaries around the world use video game controllers to operate ha hardware. It's even used in other subsea vehicles. Here you see the US Navy's Virginia-class nuclear-powered attack submarine, and its uh, photonic mask, or in common parlance, periscope, is operated by an Xbox 360 controller. Though we tend to see it um, used to run remotely controlled vehicles, so not ones that you're sitting in, your, in yourself and that your life depends on, on the use of this controller. And it's certainly not used to, quote, run the whole thing, as the late Stockton Rush CEO of OceanGate infam infamously said about the controller in Titan. In most military uses, you can see here, it's for, used for things like drones. Um, and the solution of a wireless knockoff controller connected to a Windows PC running sort of Windows 7 just seemed alarmingly cheap to many people. Well, especially considering how much people paid to, to get on the ship yeah. in the first place. Uh, so is this a cautionary tale about tech just being produced too cheaply? Yeah, of course, it's always going to be extremely dangerous cutting corners uh, when you're talking about something that's life or death, I mean, the bottom of the ocean. But there are remarkable examples of what can be done with rudimentary tech. Um, so if you look at, for instance, uh, something called narco subs or drug subs, uh, there are there have been many instances of uh, the Coast Guard's uh, the US Coast Guard in particular, uh, intercepting uh, semi-submersible vessels suspected of carrying drugs. This video is from 2019 from the uh, US Coast Guard. Um, and it's one of many such vessels that are built from very rudimentary homemade materials, but tr uh, many of them make it all the way across the ocean. This is being the Pacific Ocean. You can see there the Coast Guard slamming on the top of the uh, of the submersible. Um, but it gets wilder than that. I mean, uh, here you can see another fully submersible a submarine, a crude one, uh, which was found in Ecuador in 2010. And this was used to smuggle tons and tons of, um, of cocaine across the ocean, including with a crew inside. Um, so of course then the Ocean Gate Titan was designed to withstand depths much, much deeper than this. I mean, 4,000 4, meters, whereas these just go up to about 100 meters underwater. But it still shows what humans can do with uh, sort of scarcely believable budgets, especially when there's enough financial incentive involved. Right, and, and meanwhile, salvage efforts are underway. We might find out more about where this uh, tech failed, but people are also making the point of like, what was the point in the first place? Yes, I mean, we do have drones loaded with cameras and sensors that can descend very safely to the bottom of the ocean and take pictures and uh, relay all the information you could possibly want. So the question remains, why do people risk their lives to peer out of a small porthole? And University um, of Sydney professor Stefan Williams pondered the exact same thing. Let's take a lesson. In a submersible, you're in a sort of large cylinder, you're looking out of a relatively small porthole. You know, there's questions about how much intrinsic value there is in that. When we can instrument robotic platforms with cameras and other sensors to really help us understand these environments. But I suspect we will continue to see this, this sort of um, industry grow. There may be calls for more regulation, better understanding of how these sorts of vehicles are designed, built, and certified for use in these, these uh, deep sea environments. And this, for me, has implications not just about this example in particular, but for all of technology. Uh, as technology improves and screens get higher resolution, we get VR, you can immerse yourself in worlds. Well, no matter how much we can see and experience things through headsets or some sort of technology, for some reason, human nature 
always wants to see things for itself and will always have people uh, g trying to actually be there and experience it for whatever reason, be it, be it uh, out of personal curiosity uh, to show off, to prove that you're someone who can do it, uh, a whole number of reasons that are very limited to the human experience and not to technology. Right, no replacement for the real thing, in other yeah. words. Uh, tech editor Peter O'Brien. Peter, thanks so much.